Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. It has begun. We are kicking off our brand new series for Microsoft Excel 2016. Welcome everyone. My name is Shane and I'm here to talk to you today about the cell. The cell is the single most basic unit of a spreadsheet. Notice here in my spreadsheet that I have open, I have this little green box moving around. That is called the cell pointer. And I'm simply using my arrow keys currently on my keyboard to move around. As I go right, it goes right. As I go left, it goes left, down, up. Well, you get the picture. Okay, well these are cells, guys. Each little square is a cell. And as you can see, they're laid out into a grid. This grid is made up of columns. <clears throat> so this is, excuse me, this is column A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way out, way out. We had rows as well, the row 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Notice over here on the left, as I move up and down, you'll see the row change color slightly. You also see the column change slightly. Um, this is important because this is the cell's reference, its address, if you will. Um, so what we're looking at on the screen is about roughly columns A through R and we have rows 1 through 22. But understand that we're only seeing a glimpse of the total spreadsheet. And that's what you see in these big blue arrows up here. Um, going this way to the right, there's 16,379 more columns going to the right. And going down, we have 1,048,766 more rows going down. And you're saying, Shane, that's huge. It is huge. And what's really going to blow your mind is, is if we could take this spreadsheet out of my computer and I could physically plop it in the real world, what would that look like? Well, it just so happens that I have an image for you. Here is the lovely island of Manhattan. You can see Central Park here. And by the fact, it's going vertical here. That's why I got it kind of rotated around. But you'll see this green long rectangle. Guess what that is? That's our spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet that we're playing with right now. But our window is very small. But if we could physically lay it out in the real world, this is how big it is. Five and a half miles long by about a quarter of a mile wide. That would be total number of columns going across the top here. But the number of rows going down is huge. It's massive. So the spreadsheet is much, much longer than it is wider. And perhaps you'll, you'll realize that'll make sense uh, in later videos. But for now, that's what you see these purple boxes is. Based on each cell being about an inch wide, um, that gives us a total of 0.25 miles, excuse me, miles, if I can type, miles of columns and 5.5 miles of rows so a lot of cells at our disposal and again guys this is just a single sheet I got sheet six five four I have tons of other cells as well and other worksheets but we're not gonna worry about all those cells for now let's get back to this one hello world I had to throw that in there right this is my first video about anything technology related you got to use the words hello world so I have hello world what's so special about you well this is my first cell this is cell a1 notice in the name box that's what this little box is called the name box a1 it defaults to that name a1 being column a row one hi I'm cell e7 yes you are you're in column e row seven and if you look at the name box he says e7 well, what about this guy down here? Bake me pie. What? You want to be pie? I want to be pie. I love pie. But what are we talking about here? Well, notice that his default name is his address, which is J18. I can actually come in here with, with this cell selected. I want to make him pie. He wants to be pie. So I'm going to come up here to the name box and click and type in pie. 
so now he's pi. What do I mean by that? Well, every cell's address, and by the way, this is again J18, is always going to be pointing to this cell. The, the cell address is where the cell intersects with row and column. This cell intersects in row J and row 18, therefore J18 is the column address. But you can give nicknames to a cell, and I have given this cell the nickname of pi. And I can always come back to that cell very easily if I scroll over and scroll down deep into my spreadsheet. You can see we're now 1400 rows deep into this thing. I can come back to my drop down box up here and select pi and it automatically takes me t t back to this cell. And it just it automatically moves it to the upper left hand corner of your view. Now I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top so we're back at the very top and to the left. <clears throat> so being able to create nicknames for a cell is important, especially later on as we start building formulas. I'll be able to reference this cell not only by its cell address of J18, uh, but I can also refer to the same cell as pi. And to really, to really make this make sense, I'm going to change the value of this cell to 3.14. Oh, that kind of pie. That kind of pie, right. So hopefully that makes more sense. Um, cell names or creating nicknames for cells is, is a, kind of a big deal. Uh, but I did want to point that out. All right, guys, the first video is in the can. Thank you for watching. I got a whole lot more coming, much more organized this year. We're going to have some great homework assignments coming up. So please stay tuned subscribe to my channel. If you get the opportunity, click on the link in the description. That way I can capture your email address. And I won't spam you, I promise you that. I will not spam you, but I will let you know whenever I post new videos. Uh, you'll be the first to know. So I'll send it out a quick email just letting you know. Uh, and I'll send a link out to the video in the email letting you know that, hey, we got some new material to, to learn. All right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three.